Last year, I showed you how I determined who the best genetic genealogy company was. Now, this is really a first crack at a question that lots of people ask, wanting to have some objective criteria to determine which the best company was. Over the last several months, I've been able to think about this some more, and I've tweaked the formula of how I come up with the best genetic genealogy company. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell if you'd like to receive notifications of upcoming episodes. Every time I'm asked what the best genetic genealogy company is, inevitably, somebody will in the comments tell me about some other company which I didn't mention or I may not have even heard of. So in trying to define the best company, I need to know the best at what? What is it that I'm trying to find the best of? Genealogy is the study of relationships, and I use genetic genealogy to help find relatives that may be able to help me on my quest in learning more about my ancestors. So in essence, if a company doesn't allow cousin matching, it's not going to make my list of companies I'm even going to consider as the best genetic genealogy company. That doesn't mean that what the company is offering isn't valuable or useful to some people. It just means that it doesn't offer me something that helps me to identify relatives. Now, the analysis that I did last year came up with GEDmatch on top, followed by 23andMe, and then MyHeritage, Ancestry, and FamilyTreeDNA. While this matched what my personal favorite sites were, I tried to take a step back and look at what I actually use the different sites for as far as genetic genealogy and how that information fit into my formula for calculating the best genetic genealogy company. Now in revising my formula, I made four major updates. The first one is the data updated. Because of the year that has gone by, the database's size have grown. There have been some additions of some different tools to some of the websites and so all of the basic data had to be updated to match this new updated data. Second, I changed the weighting system. Now, because each of the columns that I came up with was using a different scale, I had to have some way to actually show which is the most important for doing genetic genealogy. Overall, database size is clearly the most important because that is how you're going to find the most matches. The more people in the database, the more likely that you're going to be related to some of those people. Third, I added in the quality match factor, which I had mentioned in a previous video. Now, while the database size will get you a lot of matches, the importance of quality matches can't be overstated because these are the people that you are most closely related to and most likely to actually find how you have a common ancestor. Fourth, I changed how the genealogy activity factor was calculated. Now this is the most difficult because each of these companies is different in their approach to genealogy. And so I couldn't use just one thing that was common among all of them to be able to compare all of them to. Ancestry and MyHeritage are similar companies. And so they maintain the same standard that I used before where I take the top 100 or 150 matches, and I see how many of them have a tree that has at least 25 people or more. Now, Family Tree DNA is not a tree building site. And so I elected to go with 1.5 times the number of matches that had a tree attached to them. Because more than likely, all of these matches are also on one of the other sites as well. For GEDmatch, because it is an upload-only site, primarily those serious genealogists are going to be uploading their information to GEDmatch, even though they may not put a GEDcom file on there. Now, because adding a tree is an extra step and there's really no easy way to update that tree and the DNA links, I decided to give a factor of five to the number of matches that had a GEDcom or a wiki link attached to their DNA. Now, 23andMe is an outlier because they don't have a tree system at all. And so I opted to use the surname and place location as 
a proxy for this. Now, because entering in surnames and places is a lot easier than building a tree, I decided to discount this with a 0.75 multiplier. Now, all of these numbers for each of these companies is my opinion of them. And so yours may be different. I'm just trying to show you how I've come up with what I think is the best genetic genealogy company. Now, looking at this revised ranking, it shows Ancestry in the top spot, followed by MyHeritage and GEDmatch, and then 23andMe and finally Family Tree DNA. Ancestry's large database size definitely gives it a major advantage. But looking at the rankings, that database size can be overcome by having tools that make finding matches more useful. And this is why GEDmatch, which has the smallest database, is ahead of 23andMe, which has the second largest database. One thing that I've mentioned before in previous videos is that even though MyHeritage is the new kid on the block when it comes to DNA testing, they have been putting a lot of effort into improving their tools and how the matches are shown for their database. If MyHeritage database size increased to 5 million and everything else remained the same, their score would actually put them at the very top. A family tree DNA is at the bottom of the list in spite of being the oldest commercial genetic genealogy company. They have a great set of tools, but they suffer from a small database size. Now, if they grew their database to 4 million people and everything else remained the same, they would actually be the top company on this list. Database size is definitely important to my overall rankings, but this needs to be augmented with great tools which help in matching with cousins. Ancestry is solidly in first place right now, but because all of the other companies have a better suite of tools, they don't have to grow their databases to the same size as Ancestry to overtake them. So in the next year, I certainly expect to see some changes to this, and a year from now, I'll try to update you on what those changes are. If you have any questions about my ranking system, put it in the comments below, and there's a link to my spreadsheet so that you can download it and you can change the numbers based on your opinion of how you think the best genetic genealogy companies should stack out. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. <music>